Hello, I'm Wyatt, and this is going to be uh, this topic of discussion is going to be about virtual reality. So, what precisely is virtual reality? Well, whenever people think of it, they think of it as a general media sort of uh, medium in that video games and entertainment purposes, but virtual, re virtual reality kind of transcends that in that it goes into more along the lines of it could be used for training purposes, it could be used for uh, medical procedures and so on and so forth. So primarily uh, this goes beyond entertainment and it's already being used in these other um, areas or professions so to speak. So for example with training new medical professionals, the, the core of the education lies within clinical experiences. So as far as theory is concerned, you can only translate so much of that in the clinical setting. Um, the next best thing you can do is practice with one another, but that may not be practical at times. So certain platforms like Second Life, which is considered to be the, the world's most popular 3D VR platform, uh, kind of bridges that gap in that it allows for uh, kind of like this professional network and support and what have you. Uh, it can also be used for um, rehabilitation services is another big prime example of how VR works. So uh, um, patients who suffer from strokes, for example, uh, can be used in conjunction with other interventions such as diet and exercise modifications that can reduce the self-care deficits that are experienced when a patient suffers from a stroke. Now, depending on how, uh, what the extent of that damage is done by the stroke will, de will dep depend on how intensive and per pervasive the, uh, the rehabilitation will be. So, in a sense, using this technology will increase the likelihood of making a recovery, though sometimes a full recovery may not be possible but it will give them motivation to continue with the therapy. Um, another instance would be the use for patients with PTSD. Uh, it's been well documented that exposure therapy is the primary means and the most successful means of treating patients with PTSD, but sometimes it may not be feasible, such as uh, people who, uh, veterans who are suffering from PTSD. So, Using virtual reality as a kind of, you introduce the patient slowly to their trigger that will uh, produce successful results. So there's certain concerns that go along with the VR technology, specifically security and privacy, but if you really think about it, any sort of piece of technology that's connected to the internet is going to have privacy issues and security concerns. Uh, primarily because there are people out there who do seemingly primitive things in that they will uh, take certain characteristics of avatars or what have you and be able to search for them in other social networking platforms. Uh, <clears throat> there's, of course, ethical considerations. Uh, one ethical consideration that some people will consider is how making a decision within a virtual reality world, how does it translate to the real world? And there are certainly two different sides of the argument. One will say that uh, actions done in the virtual reality world will translate into actions into real life, while others will say the exact opposite. But the important thing into that, into saying that is that people are capable of making their own decisions. Most people who go into these virtual reality worlds are fully aware that they are going into a virtual reality world. Uh, so pretty much in conclusion, virtual reality go, kind of transcends what we have come to expect with uh, gaming media and, um, and other entertainment media. Transcends it indeed. Thanks for watching my video.